Let's talk about one of the most popular tax planning strategies out there called the short-term rental loophole. This strategy lets you get a lot of the same tax benefits from owning real estate without having to spend 750 hours a year managing your properties. It's also a great strategy if you're a W-2 employee, but you also wanna invest in real estate on the side, you can get the tax benefits from investing in real estate by using this short-term rental loophole strategy. You don't have to qualify as what's called a real estate professional to take advantage of this strategy. You can work a lot less on managing the properties and still get the tax benefits every year. This is a great strategy if you're someone who lists properties on Airbnb or VRBO and you are renting out properties that you own on a short-term basis. Let's go ahead and dive right into the strategy and how you can qualify. So just to recap, the goal of this strategy is that you're trying to get the same tax benefits from investing in real estate without having to qualify as an active real estate professional which is going to require you to spend 750 hours a year. So we're going to get the same tax benefits or almost the same tax benefits, but we don't have to spend that much time. We don't have to spend 750 hours a year. We can spend a lot less time managing our properties and still qualify for this strategy. So what are short-term rentals? Short-term rentals are rentals where the average stay is seven days or less. So if you're renting out your properties for you know, a couple of nights here and there or a minimum of a week, you can still qualify, but you want to, to, to use a strategy, you want to make sure you're not renting out your properties with an average every year of more than seven days. That day count can actually be higher if you're providing significant personal services to guests. So if you are providing significant personal services to guests, then you may qualify as having a short-term rental even if the average stay is 30 days or less, if you're providing those significant services. I'm gonna to talk to you later about why you don't wanna provide substantial services to guests. There's a self-employment tax issue there that I'll talk about, but what those services are, are you know if you're doing cleaning and changing linens while the person is staying on the property, then those are considered significant personal services. If you're providing transportation, if you're providing entertainment or concierge type services where you book things for your guests. Basically, if you start to look like you're operating a hotel by doing those services on top of letting them stay on your property, then you're going to be viewed as providing significant personal services to your guests, and it's going to be much more difficult to qualify as a short-term rental. Also, it's going to be a bad result from a self-employment tax perspective. So what you wanna to do to use the strategy is you want to be renting an average, your properties on an average of seven days or less a year, and you do not want to be providing significant services to your guests. It's fine to clean, obviously you're gonna have someone come in or you're gonna come in and clean the properties on turnover, but you don't wanna be cleaning while the guest is staying on the property. So now that we know what a short-term rental is, Let's talk about what we need to do in order to get the tax benefits from managing those rental properties. So we still, even though we don't have to spend 750 hours a year where we're qualifying as an active real estate professional, we still have to spend some time. And that time is going to be enough time for us to be viewed as materially participating in managing those properties. So what is the material participation requirement? The amount of time you have to spend to satisfy that requirement depends on who you have helping you manage these properties. If you're doing everything from cleaning to responding to guests on Airbnb to you know engaging someone to come make repairs and overseeing that, then all you have to do is spend more than 100 hours. So if you don't have a property manager or any staff, you only have to spend over 100 hours a year on managing these properties and you're going to qualify and that's gonna be a great result from a tax standpoint. If you do have help, if you've got you know, staff or a property manager, someone like a VA who helps you respond to guests on, on Airbnb or VRBO, someone who does the communications with guests for you, you know, most of us are probably gonna outsource the cleaning, but if you've got someone who's spending a lot of time managing these properties with you or for you, then the requirement for you, the time requirement is going to be much higher and that's going to be more than 500 hours a year. So best practices, if you have anyone helping you manage these properties, 
you need to be spending more than 500 hours a year in order to get the tax benefits and be viewed as materially participating in your short-term rental business. And so what happens if you're not material participating? So if you fail the material participation requirement and don't meet these, these hour requirements every year, you're going to be viewed as passive. Your business is passive. And when your business is passive, that means you can't use any losses from that business to offset other income. So typically when we invest in real estate, we're expecting to have net losses from a tax standpoint from those rental activities. But, but and that, that's why like we're qualifying as an active real estate professional is so great from a tax standpoint, because you're almost always going to have losses from your real estate business. And you wanna be able to use those losses to offset your W-2 salary income or your interest income or other investment income but there's rules in the tax code that prevent you from doing that. So if you do not materially participate, you're not going to get the benefits from a tax standpoint of being able to offset any losses from your short-term rental business against other income. If you do materially participate in your short-term rental business and satisfy this requirement every year, if you have losses, net losses from your short-term rental business, you can offset that against any other income that's out there. So that's why it's such a great strategy is that people wanna invest in real estate, generate those tax losses, and then take those losses and offset their other income. The other thing about material participation requirement is that you, you only get to count qualifying activity. So, you know, I'm not gonna go through that in detail, but I do have, you know, other videos that talk about that in more detail about what are qualifying activities. But here, it needs to be relating to your, your short-term rental business. But what's great about the short-term rental strategy is that when you're married, your spouse's time can also count. So if you're married and you and your spouse each spend 50 hours, then you can together satisfy the 100 hour requirement. That's different than with long-term rentals because you, you, you yourself, the person qualifying as the active real estate professional has to do the 750 hours. But here you can actually split time between spouses, which makes that requirement a lot easier to satisfy. When we're investing in real estate, one of the reasons we often have net losses from a tax standpoint is that we get these very large depreciation deductions. One difference here with short-term rentals is that the depreciation deduction is actually spread out over 39 years as opposed to 27.5 years when you're dealing with long-term residential rental properties. So that might make it a little bit less likely that you're gonna have net losses. I actually see in a lot of cases with a short-term rental strategy that you might have positive uh, net income from a tax standpoint, but you're still getting tax preferred income because even though it might be net positive from a tax standpoint, you're still claiming those very large depreciation deductions every year and you're going to get to offset a large portion, if not all of that income, rental income from managing those properties. So just because it's spread out over a longer period doesn't mean it's not still great from a tax standpoint. Also, you can still claim bonus depreciation for short-term rental properties. So that can allow you to, sh to shift forward a lot of the deduction there and start to generate losses that can, can carry over or offset you know, your other income. The last thing I wanna talk about is really important because if you do not set this up right, then you could have a self-employment tax issue. So self-employment tax applies to, you know, your salary incomes that you get. You're going to, it's called payroll tax in that context, but it's really the same thing. This is Medicare and Social Security tax that you pay on your, your income. Also, if you're a business owner and you have net profits from your business, unless you're using an S-corp structure to, to reduce some of that, you're going to pay self-employment tax on all your income. So if you don't set this up right, you might pay self-employment tax on 100% of your net income from the rental properties. And that would be a really bad result because that's, that's an extra tax that could apply and those can really add up over time. But what we wanna do is set this up so that it would be reportable on Schedule C, excuse me, Schedule E instead of Schedule C. So Schedule C would be short-term rentals where you do provide substantial services. So like I said before, where you're acting kind of as a hotel by providing concierge services, doing linen services or cleaning the rooms during the stay. Those things are going to be bad because if you're doing that, it looks like you're running a hotel and that is a Schedule C business. If it is a Schedule C business, then you are paying self-employment tax on that income. But if we set this up 
which is the case for most of us who are doing Airbnbs. We aren't providing substantial services to guests. We're just letting them go, rent the property. We clean it after they leave for the next person that's coming in. Then that is actually reported on Schedule E. And that Schedule E income should not be subject to self-employment tax. So this is a really important distinction that gets missed a lot in practice. And it's something you want to make sure you understand and can flag to your CPA if they miss this. Just because it's on Schedule E doesn't mean it's passive. You, you, you want to be satisfying the material participation requirement so that this is an active activity reported on Schedule E. So that's the best result from a tax standpoint. You want to set this up that way. Don't provide substantial services to your guests. Be careful if you're going to start doing things beyond just letting them use the property and cleaning it when they leave. So this in a nutshell is the short-term rental loophole. This is a great strategy. Again, it's one of the few strategies that W-2 employees can use as a way to invest their money or reduce their taxes if they can set this up in a way that they have net losses from a tax standpoint. The losses from your short-term rental activities can offset your W-2 income, but it's also just a great investment strategy. I did this, you know, I've done this before in the past and I find that, you know, when you do list property short term on things like Airbnb, you can charge a lot more. So it can be a great way to earn, you know, cash flow in a tax preferred way. Also, I found, I don't know why it doesn't make a lot of sense, but for some reason, managing short term rentals just seems to be a lot less time consuming. So you might have a lot more properties, but for some reason, it just seems a lot less time consuming to manage these than longer term property. So this is a great strategy to use for, for anyone. It's available to, to anyone, no matter whether or not you have a full-time job or not. And it can be a great way to invest your money in tax preferred way. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to our channel.